Yo, what is up guys? It's the Goblin and welcome back to another Call of Duty Modern Warfare video. In tonight's video, we're going to be talking about the Kilo 141 best classed up in this game. I've already uploaded the M4A1 best classed up and this is another one of those early unlocked assault rifles that is honestly absolutely deadly in this game, the Kilo 141. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, Kilo, Kylo, who knows how you say it. All I know is I call this thing the ACR 2.0 because that's what it reminds me of. Definitely from like Modern Warfare 3, the ACR, uh, or maybe even Modern Warfare 2, although that one of Modern Warfare 2 literally shot bullets on a rope. It felt like, you know, on a tightrope. It had zero, zero recoil. But this one is absolutely incredible as well. The, the Silo, uh, or Kilo, sorry, why did I say Silo? Kilo 141. And I'm going to be talking about the best classed up for it, uh, attachments, equipment, perks, and all that sort of stuff. This gameplay here is also special. We'll talk about why in a second. If you could drop a like on this video, let's go ahead and go for 862 likes. If we could hit that, that would be absolutely amazing. The support so far has been incredible. You guys have been just killing it. So thank you to everyone hitting that subscribe button. Thank you to everyone dropping the likes. It takes half a millisecond to hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys are new and not already subscribed. And let's go ahead and get right into it. So like I said, this is an early unlocked assault rifle and it's one that you really want to use. This thing is a steady, steady weapon and you, you can really shoot people down with laser beams, it feels like, because of the, its ability to pick people off at range, but it's also ability to control and do well at medium range as well. I'd say it's a medium to long range weapon. And even with the time to kill in this game, I mean like assault rifles at, or everything has such a fast time to kill even like assault rifles that and look at this head glitch right here this head glitch is just absolutely nasty on this map but uh, assault rifles have such a good fast time to kill where you actually can compete with certain smgs now you don't want to be running up against the best smgs up close but at that close to medium if you play it smart get that first shot in which really is mostly what matters in this game you can do very very well with it so we'll talk about the uh gameplay here for a second we'll talk about the uh, class it up and then we'll go into the attachments towards the end of the video uh, and cover everything you need to know about about this weapon. So let's go ahead and talk about this gameplay here. Now this was a 10v10 dom on Gron's Raid where I was able to basically patrol that left side and play it sort of a little bit safer till I get my streaks. Now you can see once I get my full streaks I want to go full on in and rushing and I actually finished this game on a 28 gun streak because the game was ending so I had to rush it. Honestly I think if this game would have lasted a bit longer and I could have played it a bit safer probably would have had the nuke but it's not that big of a deal. I still think this was an awesome gameplay and was really fun to play. Like this was probably one of the most fun games games I've played so far on this game. So you can see here, obviously I have my streaks, I call them in, I go ahead and use the chopper gunner, and then uh, after this you'll see a pretty nice gun streak. But while while we're in the chopper gunner, let's take this time to start and break down this class up with the perks. Here are the perks and the equipment that I use, show it up on the screen right now, and you will see it's quick fix, restock, shrapnel with claymores, and a flash grenade. Now this is a very interesting class up, and honestly quick fix is a, something that uh, is unlocked a little bit later, uh, I recently unlocked it, but it's it's absolutely amazing. What it does is it allows you to heal quicker. Killing players, capturing objectives, and holding objectives will increase your health regeneration rate. And essentially when you get a kill off of a player, your health regen is three seconds quicker, which makes all such a big deal in this game because the time to kill in this game is super duper fast, right? Now imagine if you're already hurt, if it's from one bullet or two bullet, you are basically walking around one shot where any player can just breathe on you and you will die. So it's really important to have that health regen and in a game where people are playing very defensive and not really moving around a lot because of sort of the map design, the kill streak design, the time to kill, all, the, all, all those sort of factors play in. Using Quick Fix allows me to, as you'll see here towards the end of this gameplay, get moving a little bit. I knew I had to start rushing if I wanted to have a chance at the nuke, and I didn't really care to die and try to recycle streaks at this point. I was just like, hey, let me just run in, see what happens, and you can see how the Quick Fix does come in handy. When you do get hurt, it allows you to not take as much time. Much like the Stim Shot allows you to heal up quick the the uh, quick fix is sort of a perk one version of that and it also helps on domination because of how it does with when you're capturing objectives holding objectives and different stuff like that getting that bonus health regen as well coming in at perk two is going to be restock i think perk two restock is incredible honestly there's a lot of good perk two so i probably won't be using this on every single class setup but it is great as of right now because of the fact that claymores are stupid overpowered in this game nobody knows why they really made it like that i mean hey infinity ward i, I guess you got what you wanted you know claymores are overpowered 
hard. You know, I, I, I guess they designed the game that way, right? Restock, you can get those claymores every 30 seconds, as well as it's not just the claymore, it's the flash grenade as well, which is which is pretty effective, especially in a game where you can hear your enemies, right? Uh, sound horn and listening to footsteps is very important on this game. And when you're able to hear your enemy, and, oh, I hear a guy around the corner here, he most likely hears you too if he's try hard and if he's opening his ears and paying attention. That's funny, opening his ears. Why am I laughing at my own jokes in a commentary? I'm an absolute loser. But you know what I'm talking about, right? If they're paying attention, they will hear you. You will be able to hear them. And that's why tossing that flash grenade, banking it off of a wall, and just being able to use that can be very, very helpful. And those refresh with uh, restock also, as well as your claymores. And then coming in at perk three is shrapnel. Shrapnel allows me to start out with two claymores uh, on each life, which is pretty nice, uh, especially on a map like this, where usually the strategy on this map is patrol either the middle building, the left building, or the right building until you get your streaks. And then once you get your streaks, start running around and moving around. So having those claymores to protect your back or protect your sides, because they're so many different jump ups, so many different windows, so many different staircases to get up to different spots is fairly important. And that's what we have as far as the uh, perk setup and as far as the equipment setup. Now, on the attachments on this gun, they are pretty important. Now, this gun doesn't have too much recoil at all. Of course not, since I said this gun reminds me of the ACR. I find that quite a few weapons in this game actually are, they're pretty deadly. It reminds me a little bit of Modern Warfare 2, where it was like almost every game in Modern Warfare, almost every gun in Modern Warfare 2 was just an absolute laser, except for like the F2000, or there it was when I, I guess I died on a 28 right there, um, and uh, I was just rushing because of course the game was going to end. So I don't know, maybe I guess I could have, maybe I had like five or 10 seconds if I played it a bit smarter, I could have got it, but I was really just r full on rushing because I knew, I didn't really know how high of a streak I was on until I checked after in the, uh, records or whatever. Anyway, that's what we have as far as the uh, equipment and perks. Now let's go ahead and break down everything to do with the attachments. Yo, what is up guys? Let's go ahead and break down these attachments. First with the barrel, what you're going to rock with the barrel is you're going to want to, as soon as you hit a high enough level to use the SOCOM 16.6 inch, you're going to want to slap that on because that grants you three pretty big positives. Damage range, which is super duper important. Bullet velocity, which is also very important. And recoil control, which is, I'll say significant. It's not the most, most, most important because this gun already doesn't have very much bounce to it, but adding on extra control, uh, you know, it sort of comes with the pack package definitely is a very, very big plus. And there is a good con, or not a good con, but a pretty big con to this, which is your ADS speed. However, this class setup is not designed for sort of, you shouldn't be ADSing late on any of these gunfights. You should be more, you know, pre-aiming people, peeking, and uh, it's for picking players off who might be peeking around corners, peeking out of windows that really play to the game and map design. I think this class setup works super well with it. So that is a 16.6 inch SOCOM, which you will unlock first. And then what you want to do is once you unlock the Prowler, you're going to want to upgrade to that because as you can see it gives you the same pros it adds one more con which is movement speed once again shouldn't hurt you too much because this is a weapon where you're kind of just going to be posted up and uh, fighting at uh, long lines of sight or long to medium lines of sight but you can see here with the bonuses on accuracy damage and range you do you do lose more on the movement speed which you don't on this one but look all the bonuses are increased so it was 100% worth it in my opinion ADS speed and movement speed is not stuff you're looking for with this classed up uh, essentially so I recommend upgrading to the Prowler. When you first get a high enough level, use the SOCOM, but then upgrade to the Prowler when you do get a chance. Next, what you're going to want to rock is the stock. Now, with the stock, I want to go with the just traditional stock, which is called the Forge Tac Ultralight. It gives you aim walking movement speed, which basically just means your stock, your strafe speed, like it was in previous uh, Call of Duty games, and you lose a, a little bit of aim instability, which doesn't really matter that much. I mean, unless you're playing on a super long map and you're sort of hard scoping, it, it, you really shouldn't miss too many bullets at all because of losing aim instability compared to the amount of bullets you're going to hit, the amount of bullets the enemy is going to miss, and the amount of gunfights you're going to win by having stock. The other option for this is to go with the no stock, which basically converts it into more of a rush happy class setup. You give up recoil, you give up stability uh, on the aim main, but you get movement speed and ADS speed, which sort of counteracts against the barrel. So you can rock that. Personally though, I just think that the stock is really needed on this weapon. I tested out in a private match the strafing speeds of both, and I just feel like having this stock, I'm someone that's always 
few stock in Call of Duty on assault rifles. So if you're someone that doesn't really, you have no idea what I'm talking about, you don't really care about strafe speed, I guess you should probably give it a try. But if you know what stock is and you never really used it on your assault rifles, you might want to go with the no stock for more of a rush happy class setup with this one. However, if you're a stock player like me who likes to play a traditional AR style and strafe with it, definitely going with the first one is the nicest as far as the stock. Next, we go with a perk and we actually go with the first perk unlocked on this one, which is FMJ, which is kind of rare to go with the first one out of 11 options. But the reason is because you get bullet penetration and damage against equipment and kill streaks, which damage against equipment and kill streaks eh, doesn't really matter too much. Hey, maybe every once in a while you're trying to shoot down a helicopter or shoot down a UAV or something like that. But the FMJ increased bullet penetration is huge because it gives you full metal jacket and allows you to, of course, penetrate through walls. Your bullets will be able to a little bit more damage through walls than they would have before, which is important because in this game, it's not necessarily that you're going to be, you know, aimbot spraying people through walls. It's going to be more like everyone is posted up on a head glitch. And as you're spraying through that head glitch, you, your, your accuracy and your aim is not going to be perfect. You're not going to be just double tapping people in the head like it's H1Z1. You're going to be spraying 10, 20 bullets into there. And a lot of those bullets are going to be going maybe through the wall, through the, the post or whatever the player is head glitching on and still getting hit markers through that, which will be higher damage because of having FMJ. I think this is really nice. This weapon allows me to sort of whenever I'm pre-aiming like a, a top window and they peek, it's just boom, instant melted. And I'm not really too concerned about, uh, you know, letting it, you know, letting um, my accuracy go. You just pre-aim, you let the thing go and the FMJ will do some work for you by allowing it. FMJ is sort of something that people think it's like, okay, you're going to shoot through wall. Oh, oh, you, I don't use that. I don't shoot through walls. But if you actually paid attention to gameplays, the amount of times you shoot through material is actually quite a bit. So it can be very, very helpful. Next is going to be with the rear grip. Stipled grip tape, I still think is really, really good for the rear grip. It gives you ADS speed and sprint to fire speed. Now, ADS speed is nice. Of course, you shouldn't be ADSing late, but sprint to fire speed is amazing. That reminds me of Gung Ho from Black Ops 4, which was probably the best perk in the game. Get, get your gunny up quick is what I would always say. It allows you to basically come in out of a sprint, which is going to be almost all of the time when you are doing um, Call of Duty sort of stuff, right? You are going to be sprinting around maps, especially in this game where sometimes you spawn it. It feels like you got to literally run an unbelievable amount of time to run back into the fight. Yes, you're going to be able to shoot faster after sprinting. And the con to this is aiming stability, which I, I really don't think it's it's less stable, but very agile. I think this is 100,000% worth it, in my opinion. Now, as far as the last attachment we go with here, this is one where I will give you guys two different options for this. Personally, there is the extended mags, which you can choose between 50, 60, and 100. And you're basically just picking your magazine ammo capacity in terms of what you're giving up in terms of ADS, sight speed, and movement speed. Now, personally, if you're, I think this, this weapon has 40 rounds by default anyway. So if you're upgrading to 50 rounds, it's kind of like, uh, what's the point? You know, 10 extra to give up ADS speed and movement speed. You kind of got to go, not all in. 100 is just way too much. I don't know why you'd ever need 100 unless you're spawn trapping 32 people in ground war and going ham or something. But 60, I find is very, very nice. However, if you don't want to use this 60 round mag, because not because, you know, of course, everyone likes having 60 bullets and not having to reload as much, but because of the negatives on it, then what you, what I recommend doing is you could swap this out and you could rock with an optic sight because I know there's people that would probably want to rock optics on this weapon. And, um, that's where you could definitely go and, um, find them over here. Of course, the most popular one, probably, I'm not sure. It's just the one I see a, quite a lot of people using will be the Cronin, uh, LP945, which is a pretty, pretty nice one. And when this weapon is, is a laser as well, if you use this one, it reminds me a little bit of the MW2 ACR, just because of how this red dot looks. Um, you know, other stuff like this looks more like a, this is like a holographic from MW2. This one is sort of like, a, I guess, well, it's just a reflex site. They didn't really, they had red dots back then, I think. But this is this is more like, it's still called a mini reflex. This one looks sort of like the MW2 one, gives that nice little uh, old ACR feel. So that's what you can rock with as far as that optic or go with the uh, ammunition. It's up to you. Anyway, this is a really, really good class setup for this weapon, the Kilo 141. Check out the perks uh, and equipment I talked about earlier, the attachments here, and definitely give this weapon a go. It's really, really amazing. A lot of the stuff you need is unlocked early too. The stock, the FMJ, um, you know, your, your second barrel is going to unlock later, but your first one's unlocked fairly early. Uh, your ammo, like I said, you, you can, you don't really have to worry about these too much because it, it already is a good weapon in terms of ammo. So you could rock with an optic. And of course the grip tape, you're not going to get to until you're much, much higher level. So in the earlier, earlier levels, maybe just slap something else on, uh, to replace that. Thanks for watching though. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel. If you guys are new and I'll catch you all in the next one. Let me know in the comment section down below what other weapons you want to see best class setups for, or what weapon you want to see me cover next. And that's about it. I'll catch you all in the next one.
I'm out. Peace.